everyone, my name is Julia, this is Roberto, and this is Elisa, and we have beaten the often path by creating a bee box that allows you to manage bees in a safer way. Welcome back to the Beat the Often Path podcast, the show where we feature unusual success stories, often with an entrepreneurial and eco-friendly slant, to help us see the bigger picture of our life's work and mission. My guest today is not one, but three people from being an Italian startup revolutionizing the way bees are kept and tracked and so much more. As it turns out, bees are just a little bit more remarkable than we've ever known. And I think you'll agree after this episode that this small company founded by Roberto Passi and Gabriele Garavini are really setting about doing something worthwhile. So I can't wait to introduce you today to Roberto, Yulia, and Elisa from Being. Pleasure to meet you all. This is my first episode where we've had three people, so it's going to be very exciting. I'm expecting tons of extra knowledge today. Uh, thank you for joining me. How are you all doing? Great. Good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. How are you? I am doing very well. It's evening for you, morning for me. There's a big time difference. You are all in Italy. What part of Italy? Uh, we're in Cesena, so it's near Bologna, a little bit uh, southern. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. tell us about the concept that you have started. Okay. <laughs> Um, so basically, the company was created by Roberto and Gabriele. Um, they met in um, a startup accelerator. So they created this project together because Gabriele has a good knowledge of software engineering and Roberto is a beekeeper. So they came together and combined their forces and created this bee box right here. So the main three points and how it's different from a regular beehive is that basically what we have over here is a transparent, like a transparent wall. So it has three walls that are transparent, which allows you to like see the bees and what they're doing like basically constantly like I mean they're also having like covered you can cover them with wood like um covers so you can like open it up and see what's going on inside um the chimney which is 2.2 meters high which is around um uh, like how many feet seven feet six seven, <laughs> yeah. Six, yeah, seven. seven eight. yeah something like that um, so basically what happens is the bees instead of coming coming in from here from the bottom they come in from the top so you don't really get up close to the entrance of the bees and they don't really care like what's going on around the hive. So therefore you can like come close to it, open the walls, check inside. And the main thing is the honey harvesting system. So basically how it works is that you have to open, like you have to pull a lever and which allows the bees to like exit the honey harvesting system into the hive, into the main like nest area and no longer come back in. So you can... Uh, pull the lever and then you can also take out the little honeycombs without coming into contact with the bees. Um, so with Whoa. any like with any clothes protection and stuff. You can so do it without like, any one of those little suits, those hazmat suits, the face yeah, protection. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And they come and go via the top, the top yeah. part of it. And is that open for those who are just listening, they have one behind them right now. Is that open right now or is it shut off? Could they come and go right now? No, no. I mean, there's no, no bees. There's like, oh, we're okay. in the office, so there's a, no bees. It's a sample. Because <laughs> it looks like yeah. there are bees in there. It looks definitely like yeah. those are bees. Okay, it's a prototype or a sample. Okay, got it. Yeah. But when it's outside or in real use, can they just come and go or do you shut it off sometimes? Doesn't matter. No, 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 we, we don't shut it off. So the bees, they have to have access to the outside at all times, basically. Unless you're trying to move the beehive from one area to another, then you have to close it. But usually, yeah, because they have to go out to eat and drink. So no, you can't like lock them inside. Huh. So when I buy this box from you and I set it up, bees just automatically start coming in? Um, no, no, no. Normally how it works is you can purchase bees from a local beekeeper. Okay. I mean, I think in the U.S. you can also ship them, hmm. but here how it works is that you purchase them, yeah, from a local beekeeper, and usually, like, he comes to install it for you, so it comes on already, like, four or five frames, and then what you have to do is just put it inside, and slowly, as the swarm, like, a group of bees grows, then you just add more, add more frames, and, yeah, that's how you populate the bee box, basically. Wow, Okay. So aside from it being something that you don't need protective clothing to use, which is amazing, 
what else is the benefit or what, what was the reason for creating this versus other alternatives? Uh, the, the reason was to create something that was uh, like a, something sim- simple, something you can use every day. Because, you know, every time, uh, if you have a traditional hive, uh, whatever other model, um, to watch and to have the, um, the opportunity to observe your bees, you always have to open. And when you open a hive, they are not relaxed. They are scared. Uh, something happens. Somebody remove a wall uh, of the house to watch inside. So um, it's really difficult to find a way to observe bees uh, uh, while they are really working and not disturbing them. So uh, the idea was to create something that uh, was like, a, um, yeah, something you can keep at home, super safe, super simple, something you can show to a friend, something you can uh, use with uh, children that is uh, super okay for school, for educational projects. So the idea was to uh, have something really new that, that didn't exist before, to create a new experience with the bees and also something that really fit with the urban uh, environment. situation and environment um, in order to make also the city more comfortable for, for the bees mm. because, you know, city are not only for human. Uh, city need to be integrated with the, the ecosystem, with the nature situation. So it's some, it's a, we want to transform also city in a place where bees can find a good home for, for them. Oh. Yeah, another another cool thing about the bee box is basically um, the honey harvesting system consists of 16 small like honeycombs. So they're like this small, pretty, I don't know, like 10 by 10, <laughs> more or less. And what you can do is you can take like only one at once. Uh, you, so you can like leave more honey for the bees. Yeah. Well, okay. And is, is viewing them, is that just fun or is there some reason that it's nice to view them? Um, no, let's say that uh, watching bees, uh, besides being fun, is also becomes also an educational tool uh, for, as, as Roberto mentioned, uh, for uh, school environments and education environments. Uh, and so let's say that it becomes a tool to to get people closer to to nature. So we know that there is uh, an increased interest and also need to to get close to nature and uh, wild animals like in a responsible way so yeah that's how it becomes an um, yeah an integrated tool and educational tool wow that's great all right folks this is that moment where we stop the action just for a minute and it's been good boy i'm having fun talking to these guys i want to interject just a quick little shameless plug for my own podcast here I'd like to remind you that if you haven't done so already, please stop right now, rate this podcast five stars on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on Spotify, on YouTube, subscribe anywhere you see me, anywhere you see the show, anywhere you can subscribe, and more importantly, share. Share the episodes that you like, share this episode with people who might benefit from it. Let people know about these kinds of stories and help me grow this podcast. And as always, if you know somebody with a great story that fits the model here, recommend them to me. I'm always looking for new, exciting guests to feature. So let's get back to the show. So we all know that bees are very unimportant. They're just annoying, right? There's no positive benefit to bees, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or is there? <laughs> What's so great about bees? Yeah, so basically uh, bees and other pollinator insects are fundamental for the earth ecosystem because of their pollinating um, uh, activities. Uh, So it's impressive if we think that about 70% of worldwide food depends on bees and pollinating pollinators in general. Uh, so that means that if bees uh, disappeared, uh, then we wouldn't have uh, food on our table. And yeah, it, there would not be the the biodiversity and the earth ecosystem as we know it today. So, yeah. So I guess they're a little bit important then. Just <laughs> yeah. a little bit important. So you said 70%. So do you, do you really believe, I know there's that quote that says, if all of the bees disappeared, that humans would disappear shortly after. Do you believe that? I mean, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, there, there would not be the, as I mentioned, the, the world as we know. So of, for sure, we, we should get rid and we should renounce to a lot of food, nuts, uh, fruits and vegetables. So and yeah, and in the long term, for sure, the, we would probably disappear for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, because certain foods, I mean, yeah, like you said, fruits, nuts, blueberries, other things exclusively pollinated by bees, no other possible alternative. Yeah, maybe some other insect, but it's not the same performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the, a farmer without bees can can reduce his production up to 70%. So um, maybe the wind too can pollinate a bit, but it's not really the same. So sense. it's also a, a really big uh, economy problem. Okay, yeah. And it uh, you know, if you've heard anything about bees in the last 5 years, we seem to be facing some kind of crisis at the moment regarding bees. So what's the story there? So there are a lot of issues related to bees. Uh, it's uh, first of all, you need farmer to produce uh, enough, they need to use a lot of chemical product and uh, of course this chemical product uh, uh, are going to kill the insects that uh, create problem for fruit, uh, vegetable, and so on, but are also creating some problem to good insects like uh, the bees. Uh, another big problem for bees, but pollinator in general, is related to the climate change. So climate change, uh, for example, is uh, changing the, the color of flowers. So there are some type of insects that are not even more able to um, recognize the, the flower they need to, to go. So, um, yeah, there are different problems that are overlapping each other, creating big issue for pollinator in general. Okay. It, has it reached the point that it's a crisis or is there still time? It's, uh, it's a crisis, but um, there is a still time because um, the, the bees are mainly managed by human, by beekeeper. So, uh, on a bee, yeah. So, every year there is somebody that... Uh, uh, start of repopulating because uh, for different reasons because it's their work but also because it's important so it's a crisis but I think we we still have a, uh, a way to get out of it but we we need to do something and uh, and immediately and immediately yeah there's also the issue with disease so like varroa for example is pretty widespread and like beekeepers they always have to use some kind of um, what do you call it like, treatments to treat varroa otherwise like it'll just take over the hive and yeah so this is also a big issue okay there's a that's a bee disease a bee specific disease that they get yeah it's a type of mite oh that interesting off on the bees yeah okay and is it also true that they're being attacked by other things like these aggressive wasps the the murder hornets or various other hornets they're being killed by those as well yeah. yeah, that's a consequence of the globalization process because, uh, you know, maybe this type of insect that are able to keep killing the bees, uh, maybe 10 years ago, lives just in one uh, state, in one area. Uh, people are moving uh, uh, guards, uh, uh, everything. So also the insects are being moved uh, around and uh, maybe inside one container or, or in some way. So it's also a process of related to the globalization that new insects are start populating new new area, new new continent. So yeah, we I think um, the nature itself need to find a new balance because people are changing uh, a lot of stuff. So nature itself started to creating a new situation and new balance. Definitely. And and what was this? What led you to become a beekeeper, Roberto? How did you get started as an individual beekeeper? Uh, I my my grandfather was a was a beekeeper. So at one point, I get ten hives, and I start understanding how it work. Um, what uh, what were the beekeeping uh, uh, daily activity? And um, a lot of them were really difficult and uh, also sometimes boring. And um, it was hard to me, for example, to share this opportunity with my friend uh, to show them the bees. Uh, and I start thinking, oh, if I change uh, the hive, if I add uh, a glass in this side, if I uh, maybe make it uh, higher, uh, if I if uh, I, ha- I add uh, a chimney, maybe it's, it's safer. So 
after some you know prototype test, uh, I, I think I've been lucky in finding Gabriele that uh, was happy to share this uh, this uh, story, this uh, journey with me. And uh, yeah, we start. Uh, we uh, we had been uh, brave enough to <laughs> or crazy enough to 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 decide to start. And here we are. We are we are happy now. We have uh, like uh, five six uh, employees, and five, we are trying to, to to do that. And um, we are we. We have a customer in over 40 countries in the world. So oh, there are a lot of big box around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, every day we try to, to, to do something better to uh, improve the, the, the prototype itself, uh, to change some feature. No? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, we are, we are happy that a lot of people believe in the project, but also we are evolving and accelerating the business because we... Uh, we are trying to, to reach more and more people to create a, a real community, uh, a community of responsible urban beekeepers, because, yeah, we believe that that's the only way for people uh, also to raise awareness on this topic, you know. So for us, education is a, is a, um, yeah, a mandatory and a priority. So that, that's why we are also moving, uh, not moving, but integrating our business from just a, uh, products so from B-Box also to a series of services so we are focusing in uh, uh, assistance so with uh, we have a, a quite a big uh, network of professional beekeepers all around Italy of course uh, <laughs> for a matter of uh, ease of logistics so, um, uh, and this um, uh, these beekeepers are our hands and our eyes who support every day our customers and now we are also moving to providing digital online courses to, to get people more, uh, more and more knowledge because, of course, that's the only way to, on the one hand, to, to keep the, our bees safe uh, among all the customers, um, but also to, uh, yeah, to, to grow together and to make the customer happier. <laughs> that's great. That's wonderful. Um, when you two first met, what was the first thing? So, Roberto, you had an idea. You said, oh, maybe if we make these changes, uh, the box will be safer. Well, how did your collaboration first start? What did you both do to get started on this project in 2017? In 2017, we start uh, not with the B-Box. Uh, we start working with uh, IoT device. Uh, so we start creating some prototype to help Beekeeper uh, to have um, data from remote about uh, their their bees, so about the activity, uh, finding them uh, with a GPS, uh, maybe uh, have a real time notification about temperature and humidity inside. So the idea was to solve uh, some uh, issue because um, beekeeper discover what's happening at the bees only when they they go to the apiary and check in person. So the first idea was to help them having information in real time from remote. And uh, after one year, so we start with some IoT prototype that it's a product that now we are selling. And um, after that, we started working on the Hive with the idea, first of all, to, to, to modify it in order to have it at home and, uh, and to keep it closer in order to that... Uh, could be how it could be safer. So the idea of the chimney and then the transparent uh, wall and uh, and so on. Amazing. So do people who get this new box, how often, if I get this box and I don't wear any protective equipment, how often will I get stung? Never? Once? <laughs> Ten times? <laughs> no, maybe never, depending on maybe what you never. do. Maybe <laughs> never. Do people normally <laughs> never get stung? No, you shouldn't get stung because uh, bees uh, die when they stung. So, of course, they, don't, they have no interest in, uh, in sting, stinging. stinging, stinging. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, of course, the, that's why we, we, we are pushing for responsible beekeeping because we want to make sure that, uh, <laughs> that the customer are able to, uh, to keep the bees safe, but they also don't get stung. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, that's why it's important, even if this bee box simplifies a lot the process, it's important to be prepared and to have a, a, at least a basis knowledge of bees also because of course i mean this area is a, the, the bottom is super safe but of course if someone goes in the front and yeah. starts shaking <laughs> right. the bees would not, be, would not be happy and maybe some of the 
um, visiting my, my thing. But yeah, that's okay. uh, yeah, that's a matter of how much you you learn and you are willing to uh, to learn about this. But in theory, if I buy this box, I can just put it in my backyard. Uh, I can get the bees in there, and then. Do I need to do anything to maintain it, or do they just do their thing? I can harvest honey sometimes. That's yeah, it. Because bees take uh, good care of themselves, so basically they do their stuff. The the swarm. Uh, uh, there there are fifty thousand bees on average, so every bee uh, does his own uh, her own work. Uh, but of course, as you mentioned before, as there are sadly some new diseases uh, because of uh, anthropic and because of us, um, they need some uh, some cure, so uh, some maintenance, let's say. Yeah, but this is uh, something not really uh, not really difficult and not and it's not so frequent. So we are talking about maybe uh, two, three uh, antiviral treatments per year. So it's. Uh, pretty good of course it also depends on how much you you care about like heavy honey production so if you uh, really want to like maximize pr production maybe you will uh, you will need some extra care but generally yeah the, the, the bees take good care of themselves yeah mm -hmm. plus you can you can sometimes see what's what's happening in the hive thanks to the transparent walls so you don't always have to like open it up and do whatever is going on inside but just by looking outside, you can already tell more or less their health. If yeah, they're yeah. doing well or if they have a problem. Okay. Yeah. And and how much honey does it generate? How often do you get honey? How much honey? Yeah, it highly varies from the area and from the, a lot of like several uh, weather conditions and temperature, humidity and so on. So it's hard to say, but on average, you can harvest up to 20 kilos of honey per, per year. So quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, so That's way more bad. than a family <laughs> could ever. That's a lot of honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. More than a kilo per month? That's a lot. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how many jars is that? That's a lot of jars, right? That's like 10... <laughs> Depends how big is the jar. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a one kilo jar. <laughs> That's right. Fair enough. I walked into that one. Um, okay. Well, this is this is really cool. How how much does it cost for the bee box currently? It's 489 euros uh, okay. plus VAT for the countries of VAT. Okay. And you ship uh, all around the world. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Amazing. That's great. And I think I saw from your website that you got started. So you both self-funded. Each of you put some money in to create the business. But then you also did a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, right? How did that go for you? It was uh, an amazing experience because, uh, you know, I think that um, Indiegogo, first of all, uh, and the crowdfunding in general, help you create a community. And that's really amazing because people around the world start looking at your project uh, and start... Uh, uh, trust you. I think that that's the bigger value. They trust you and they say, okay, I'm interested. I make a pledge. I order one. And uh, they also know that uh, you are a little startup. You are just starting and uh, they know that you will ship the product. Maybe you will ship the product. I'm not sure. After mm -hmm. one year. And so, um, yeah, I think that the best is uh, to find people that uh, like your project and that trust you. And um, so we we started, we find uh, people around the world, uh, thanks to Indiegogo, that were interested in the project. Uh, people start uh, ordering and um, and everything started. So we we need we start to finish the project. Uh, we need to find uh, a wood provider, somebody who works the wood, uh, shipping, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything. Certification. Yeah, certification, uh, yeah. understand how the the border of the different country work. <laughs> so, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, law about the uh, import and export of wood. So we now we are super expert about that. But <laughs> two years ago, no, we have no idea. So, of course. yeah, I think it's a really a great experience. And uh, and at the end, we, we shipped uh, everywhere. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. There so were great. like some issues because of covid of course. So, yeah, but we, we managed. So. <laughs> okay, I was going to ask. So it didn't affect you too much the last year and a half or however long it's been? I mean, 
I think not not as much as other sectors and uh, product categories because um, actually, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, bee- urban beekeeping also becomes a, a real passion and hobby. So people who got uh, sadly were <laughs> confined in their homes, uh, they also had a lot of time, um, like in a good and bad way, but at least they could dedicate more time in uh, new activities and like beekeeping. Activities. They, could, beekeeping. they yeah. could just sit outside by themselves, socially distant, and start a new hobby. Do each of you have your own bee box now? Do each of you do this individually at home? Unfortunately, no, because I live with roommates, and I'm pretty sure my roommates would not want to participate in the, yeah. But you, I mean, keep if I live inside. alone. I but if, <laughs> if, let's say your building had a rooftop, you could set one up on the rooftop or a couple on the rooftop. Yeah. If you don't have a yard yeah. or grass, you, there's other places that you could set yeah, up. Even in the balcony or, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Amazing. Both, the, both the founders, they have bee box because they have a backyard. So. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> the backyard is key. Okay, when you first yeah, set up... We're also, yeah. mm-hmm. we also running some project with the local municipality. So we have some uh, bee box uh, in a uh, public park uh, and the garden, so yeah, there are also shared uh, bee box. Uh, okay, so yeah, you, you've you've set them up around town, and people can see, and they can understand the project, and they can learn about it. That's great, and it's obviously something that would be great for schools as well. Do you have yeah. them set up in schools in your local area? Yeah, even for like very small small kids, like for primary school kids, because as it's safe and so interactive, people get really a lot of fun, and they learn a lot. And uh, like while for uh, with uh, like universities and campus, we we develop together a real like uh, research project where we also include uh, um, bio uh, air quality biomonitoring because with bees it's possible uh, they detect uh, the main pollutants present in the air. What? Uh, yeah, that's very very exciting. So it's a, a, a kind of data and information that is very crucial. Uh, for for university and schools and of course for the whole community uh, and so yeah that's um, a path that we are uh, taking with uh, a lot of public and private entities incredible so when you say that they detect pollutants in the air how do you yeah. know what they detect yeah we, you you take a sample of honey um, and uh, and it's possible with uh, like quite easily with a labor- either a laboratory that is one of our partners or with the university as I said to from the microscope to analyze uh, what kind of pollutant there is, especially like heavy metals or uh, uh, aero particles like up to uh, like really uh, like zero point zero one p. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, parts per million or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, very, very small. So if, and, if I have one of these and I live near a major street, as I do, if I buy one of these, um, would that mean that maybe it's not safe for me to eat the honey if I live in a polluted area? Would it mean uh, that it's bad for me? No, it's the other way around. There's uh, several studies, among which one is uh, American. And that's uh, studied the difference between the, the honey composition uh, in urban and suburban areas. And uh, yeah, and the result was uh, incredible. So it's been found that the urban honey is better, not just because it doesn't have uh, um, the, the chemicals and the, the pesticides of uh, the, the field, the suburban areas, but uh, above all, it has a, a way higher level of um, biodiversity because in the cities, in the parks, in the gardens, in the balconies, there's a lot of um, much more variety of flowers and plants. So the honey is way richer and the bees are actually healthier than uh, in the suburban area where there are like these huge fields of monoculture. So, yeah. So- and the pollution you can find in the honey in the city is the same pollution that it's in the air. So it's the same pollution you inspire every day. So uh, we, you breathe every day. Which is already you. bad. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Especially here yeah. in Los Angeles, <laughs> we have great air. Yeah. In case you didn't know. <laughs> um, but that's, that's, that's shocking. I would have never guessed that urban honey is actually better than rural honey. I can't believe that. But yeah, good, yeah, good for me. Yeah. <laughs> 
I guess because that's yeah, how you're, bad pesticides you're a are. Now. What? You could be a beekeeper now. I know. I want to be. I'm really excited. I'm. A, I'm actually going to move into a place that should have a yard. Now I'm thinking, let's do this. I'm very interested. I don't want to buy honey anymore like a sucker. I want to make my own. I want to start selling this. I'm going to make a side business. You know, I got to earn it back. I can sell one kilo per month. Good. Um, so, okay. So you started with crowdfunding, you raised your own money, you got a successful Indiegogo launch, then you got, um, some support from an angel investor, right? And then at that point you got another round, uh, from the Emilia Romagna region financed you, I saw. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so was it then everything just took off? Things started really rolling at that point? Yeah, we, we can say that. Uh, it's, um, I don't know, everything is going, uh, but uh, we need to grow. So, uh, yeah, at, at this point, uh, COVID came, so as other problem. And, um, yeah, we, we are also trying to evolve the business. Uh, also, for example, now we have some uh, high cost uh, related to the shipping of the bee box because, you know, it's uh, quite uh, big and heavy. And it's all uh, wood, so it doesn't really make sense to ship uh, uh, something so big and heavy uh, in another continent. So now we are trying to find new solution, also more sustainable sol solution, not only from the business point of view, but also for the uh, impact uh, on environmental situation point of view. Um, so yeah, you know, you know, every day there is a, some a new challenge, and. Um, that's why we like to run our startup and it's really it's really challenging and interesting well i think one of the most interesting things that i saw is that there's so much in addition to this box you have so many technological things that i never would have thought of you've been thinking about tracking and gps and i saw something that you have called b secure which is a, an anti theft device can you tell us what b secure is okay um, so basically, it's a really small IoT device that you put into the beehive, so into the frame itself that tracks multiple things. So first of all, the GPS location, uh, temperature, humidity, and we are currently working on devices that also track the sounds of the bees. So they, they listen to the sound of the bees and translate it into useful information for uh, beekeepers and also farmers because, uh, because of the whole thing with pollination. Um, yeah, and so <laughs> that's that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a combination of technology, try to help the uh, beekeeper. So from one side, we try to help professional beekeeper, and the other side, we try to uh, give the opportunity to everybody to become an urban beekeeper. That's amazing. So how did you know or get the idea to bring that technological component? Is that your role, Gabrielle? Are you the one who is saying we should bring in this side of things to the practice of beekeeping? Oh, but uh, this is Elisa. But oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm so yeah. mistaken. Elisa, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> Elisa, <laughs> whose idea was it to bring the technological part of um, this to bees? Yeah, I think it was more uh, an idea that came together when they found it. The, the whole idea itself. So I thought that they used the, the competence of Gabriele that is a... Uh, uh, informatic engineer, so his competence in uh, IoT and informatics, and they decided to combine to the traditional knowledge of uh, Roberto uh, for the beekeeping. That's amazing. And you talked about the sound, so microphones that listen to the sound of the bees. Where did that idea come from, and how would you know whether it's good or bad? Because, you know, professional beekeepers are used to listen to the bees before watching inside a hive. Because um, it, it's like if you sit outside a stadium where there is a football match. Right. And, uh, okay, it, you can't understand what each uh, people is saying, but you really understand when the, the local uh, football team uh, right. score or something. Okay, so... Um, it's the same. Professional beekeepers know that uh, uh, when they listen some strange or really high um, noise from the hive, there's something wrong. But um, for a human, it's impossible to understand uh, 
uh, what's the situation there, there mm. inside they need to open and watch with a microphone uh, a lot of university already know that uh, st uh, university study demonstrate that uh, um, bees are talking so bees are saying something there is this specific problem so with some microphone and some technological device uh, you can uh, relate uh, um, the type of noise the type of vibration to a specific topic now we can understand what each bee is, each single bee is saying but we can understand the topic they are discussing about so yeah we are doing this uh, this work with the same um, goal to to help a professional beekeeper having information from remote so not uh, they can understand what's happening also if they are not there if uh, they are far, uh, maybe 100 kilometers, and then so on. Well, that's that's really a great analogy, the soccer stadium, the football stadium. That's That makes so much sense. I completely get that. That's great. Um, so yeah. if you were an experienced beekeeper, this is something that you would have picked up. So if you're, you know, your parents are beekeepers, you just know this intuitively. You know, oh, they sound like something's wrong today. Yeah, I know how what's a, a sound that uh, that mean that there is something wrong, and um, but uh, we came up with the idea talking with professional beekeeper because when when you start listening to people, uh, of course they said, oh my my job is difficult because we have this problem, this problem, this problem, and we said okay we we can solve all your problem of course, but maybe on this topic we, we can help. We know there is a technology that maybe can help. We, we can try. So I think that's the meaning to run a startup. Try to solve something that that, uh, that uh, somebody care about. That's that's exactly it. And for our listeners who are listening, can you make the sound of a happy beehive? Go, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. You, you can find a lot of on YouTube, but uh, no, thank you. Thank you for your trust, but I can't. I was hoping for that. That's a golden moment. All right, next time, next time. Uh, I, looked, I looked on your website, and there's this chart that you have. You've got eight things that your company, that's this very colorful chart. And, you know, if you, if you look at startups, especially eco-friendly startups, you see a lot of missions and mission statements. But you have eight pretty unbelievable things on your website. Uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth. That's a lot of stuff for one company. Can you tell us something about this mission? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we, um, uh, when we, we started to, to write our uh, impact on environment and society, uh, we started to, to link uh, the, the direct and indirect link between bees and all the SDGs. And uh, yeah, some were very easy and direct. So for instance, the SDG on the, the, the well-being uh, and the SDG on life on earth. Uh, and, um, yeah, but other, like the SDG on sustainable cities and communities. But on others, we, we made some research and... Uh, yeah, we found that there were like some incredible link that we have even even not thought about. And uh, yeah, for instance, quality education, as we mentioned earlier, uh, like with bees, you can uh, learn a lot of things, not, not just about the bees and the animals itself, but about the, the air quality, for instance. So in this case, it touches uh, the, that SDG. Uh, the climate change for the same reason, because it, uh, it becomes... Uh, uh, a tool to analyze their quality. So really, um, yeah, we found that basically uh, we found some official researches that were testifying that bees were correlated to 15 out of the 17 SDGs. So we, we said, okay, this is uh, too amazing to not uh, put it on our website because everybody should know. <laughs> That's true. I, I'm shocked. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning of this episode, that bees aren't very important. <laughs> exactly. <They're, laughs> but you're talking about okay, and, and clean water and sanitation as well. That's something that people wouldn't expect. Yeah. How do they contribute yeah, exactly. to clean water and sanitation? Yeah, exactly. Because with the with the pollinator activities of bees, uh, besides the food that we already discussed about, so the zero anger, uh, actually they pollinate also a lot of other plants and flowers that indirectly they contribute to keep the the whole ground. Uh, the, the whole ecosystem healthy 
And so consequently, with a healthy ground, earth, uh, there is also a healthy um, water uh, inside the earth. So, yeah, on, on these things, uh, really, we, we even didn't know, to be honest, because of yeah. <laughs> it, uh, there has been a lot of researches on this, and it was uh, just uh, incredible to, to find out uh, also about this. That's truly remarkable. Yeah, I certainly would have never known any, at least half of this is stuff that I would have never <laughs> considered beyond the very basics. That's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, so what would your goal be then? Every house, every apartment has a bee box. What, how do we solve this thing? Yeah, yeah, more than every house, more than quantity, let's say we, we are more focused on quality. So uh, of course, we would like our like, urban beekeeping community to, to grow and expand way more than uh, is now, so to accelerate the business a lot. But yeah, as we said, it, for us, it's really important to, uh, to make people aware of, of, of the bees and aware of their role. So that's why we're also focusing so much on uh, education and, and training. So, but yeah, for, in terms of like environmental impact, for sure, uh, what would be very valuable is for people to, to, to keep bees in a healthy environment and to know how to keep them. And uh, to, and, but also another action that someone can do besides keeping like a beehive, a bee box, is also like small gestures like promote and eat and consume organic honey, local honey from responsible beekeeping or to plant uh, uh, bee friendly flowers. So there are like so many things that everyone can do in their everyday life. Every day, that's, um, yeah, we think, we think that it's worth to, to spread the world. <laughs> I agree. And I'll do my part. Um, and I, I'm going, now you've got an aspirational beekeeper here. Now I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> I'm excited. I like the idea. It's, it fits, you know, with, with what I like to do in general. I mean, I, I get my produce from a farm. There's what we call a CSA box. I don't know what you would call it there, mm -hmm. but community supported agriculture. There's a local farm in my area. So they just send me a box of produce every week actually interviewed the woman who created this uh, many episodes ago. But that's great <laughs> because I get farm directly to me, no shipping, nothing like that. But if there is another component that all of us can do, like we can get honey for ourselves or we can maybe grow food in our backyard and maybe the bees can help pollinate the food that we grow. Is that reasonable too? Yeah. So it all yeah, yeah. fits in. Then we're all getting healthier. We're helping the environment, which is okay. stuff that I really love. Small gestures matter. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's awesome. I think it's a really really cool mission. I'm really glad that I was able to talk to you all today. Um, what what Thanks. would you say the next? What's the next goal? What's the next five years? What would you want to do? I think we can um, we can grow as a company um, and maybe be able to uh, increase the quality of our product uh, and also every day find a new way to talk to people, to meet uh, new people and uh, to make it more, more accessible, more accessible. Uh, and also right. to moving from, yeah, just from honeybees, we would like to move and focus more on pollinators in general. Yeah. So that, that's great. And why do you think people want to steal these boxes? Are they, are they valuable? Why does that, why do people <laughs> No, usually we use the anti-theft system just for the traditional hive. So it's a way to help a professional beekeeper with their traditional hive. But is that a big problem? Somebody comes in and steals your Yeah, hive? yeah, yeah. It, it's really a big problem. So why? Yeah, what, why do they value. want... Yeah, because, you know, because um, raising bees is not easy. So when you find um, it's... Um, you also need a lot of knowledge uh, for all the topic we already discussed, uh, climate change, uh, chemical. And so, yeah, we are in a big crisis for, for bees. So uh, a lot of beekeeper and a lot of other people lose their bees. So, yeah, you know, sometimes somebody thinks it's an easy and a good way to stole uh, somebody else's uh, bees, but uh, mm. of course it's not. And uh, yeah, and, and the value is not just the, the, the beehive or the swarm itself, it's the whole uh, uh, honey production capability of the swarm. So when you steal a, 
a beehive is not just to steal like the wood and the bees, but also all the honey that they are they have collected up until that time and the, the honey that they are able to uh, to deposit uh, in, the, in the following months. So it has a big value. It all comes market. back to that sweet, sweet honey. That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's where the world works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, great. Well, Roberta, on the business side, this has been so excellent. On the business side, what would you say for advice to people who have an idea? Maybe they want to change something. They want to create a product. They want to create a startup. Now that you've kind of done all of that, what advice do you have to somebody who maybe has an idea, but they haven't done anything about it yet? I think that uh, at the end, the only good advice is to just do it. Just, just try. If you really want to just try because, uh, at the end, I think the 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 main um, the main problem, the main uh, challenge is to uh, stop thinking and start. You have just have to decide from where you need to start, and uh, and let's go because uh, uh, you you can be yourself. You can be the main uh, problem for your startup if you if you never let go. If you never start. Uh, at the end, uh, um, if you want, you really can find. It's not hard to find the money. It's not hard to find. Uh, um, if you really believe in the project, uh, you can share it. Uh, just telling uh, to other people, for sure, you will find somebody that say, okay, you, you are so happy and you trust the project. I, I too, okay, you, you convince me. I, I want to be part of that. Uh, so it's just about uh, uh, having a dream. Dream something <laughs> and let let's do it. Uh, okay, we we are here. I think we we really can change uh, uh, the stuff around us. Uh, every type, uh, uh, politics, business, um, environmental. We we can change everything. It's just up to us uh, to to start doing something. And um, it, it's more difficult to to think about that. Uh, I think it's uh, more easy to okay. I change my habit. I make the I don't know. I, I I changed my way to collect the the waste. I I I separate plastic from paper. Uh, we we can do everything. I I buy an electric car. I don't know. Let's let's do something. <laughs> Just anything. <laughs> anything is better than nothing. Yeah, always. I completely agree. Well, I think it's a truly fascinating story. It's I'm really glad. Thank you again for taking the time to to catch up Thank with you. me. It's been really amazing. I. I really didn't know when I first found you how amazing it is, but now I know much more. So you're and, educated. And now you're, you're a beekeeper. That's so right. Welcome. Oh no, I'm I'm a future beekeeper in training. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. I promise you, I will become a beekeeper. I'm about to move to a place that has a yard, not yet, but in a little bit. And when I do, I will be contacting you shortly. So stay oh, tuned. Nice. Okay, I, I'm very excited. And if my daughter gets um, stung by the bees. I have a three-year-old daughter. If she gets stung, just know that in the United States, we like to sue people very aggressively. <laughs> so I will try to shut down your whole company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Never. No, I really believe in what you're doing. You'll find a new project. Yeah, Don't worry. I know. You'll be fine. In Italy, everything is fine. That's the beautiful part about it. You'll be okay. I will suffer. No. Uh, I, I will definitely do whatever I can to support you on your mission. Um, now I want to do something. Since I have three of you, I never get to do this, but since I have three of you here, I always like to end the episode where people say, what is the best piece of advice they've ever received? But now I want each of you to say that to end this episode. You first. <laughs> Me. <laughs> okay. um, well, honestly, the best piece of advice is from Roberto, like to just do it. Like, that's it. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, one down. <laughs> uh, okay, this is not an advice, but a uh, proverb. What is this? Proverb. Proverb. A, a proverb? A thing, a yeah. Thing, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that inspired me is uh, when the... Um, the wind blows. Uh, some people build walls and other build windmills. Wow. I like that. That's great. Okay, Roberto, pressure's all on you now. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been first. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, to always keep going. Also, when people uh, 
maybe are not uh, not agree with me to find uh, uh, something positive in what they are saying. So always find something positive uh, in uh, also people that not agree with me and not share our idea. Also wise advice. Okay, three good job. Bravo. Very nice. Okay, all good. <laughs> Pressure is off. And the very, very, very final thing now is I want to give you the opportunity to promote whatever you want to promote. So say a little bit about what people can do to support you so you can close this with whatever you want to promote to the people. Uh, I don't know. Just, just uh, visit our website, uh, so being.it. And, um... Yeah, and uh, there will be always like new, new products and services and projects, so just stay tuned and make your part if you... <laughs> If you feel like doing it, <laughs> so plant some flower, friend, be friendly, uh, yeah. read something about the bees, uh, read something about uh, environmental situation in general, adopt and, a beehive, uh, adopt a beehive, <laughs> buy <laughs> buy a bee box if you want. If not, no problem. <laughs> and uh, be be part of the community. I be love it. <laughs> so that sounds that sounds support great. Local <laughs> support local beekeepers. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that we rescheduled this, Roberto, because now there was the three of you. This was a lot of fun for me. So it's and we got the beehive in the background. That's wonderful. Yeah, totally. It adds different, a lot right? of production value. You were totally right. So it was good to do this. Um, thank you yeah. all again, very much Thanks. for taking the time to share your story. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you for the opportunity. And with that, the official part of the podcast is over. Thank you very much. Well, I'm buzzing. That was an incredible episode. I had so much fun talking to these three amazing people. Needless to say, I'm a tremendous fan of being now, and I can't wait to start on my own journey as an amateur beekeeper. I love this story for so many reasons. It's just incredible. If you've liked it too, if you like the show in general, if you've liked any of the guests that I've had on, please, again, rate the show five stars, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on Spotify, on YouTube, find me on Instagram at the Ross Palmer. Reach out, connect, comment, like, share, subscribe, and again, most importantly, share these stories with people in your network who might like to hear them and who could benefit from the information contained within. Help me grow this podcast. That's all you can do. I will continue to work hard bringing you this stuff every single week. So thank you for listening. I appreciate you. See you next time.